Earth. The legacy of the Hell Wars. <laughs> when mankind fought the armies of Hell, and Hell won. With every passing hour, another nation crumbles to the technological might of his menace and their monstrous leader, Count Dracula. As the oceans fill with the blood of billions, a desperate few bravely hold their ground, defiantly refusing to abandon all hope. That's right. We watched Manborg on this episode of... Be Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B Movie Mania. And now, B Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and crazy Chris Hudson. <laughs> What's up, dudes? Hello, Michael. Hi, <laughs> well, fuck it, let's just... Hi, everyone, well, hello, and welcome to B-Movie Mania. Hi. Uh, oh, no, I'm not talking to you yet, Jay, sorry, I was before, I fucked up with the intro and how okay. it works. Okay. Well, okay, still, all right. Uh, <laughs> so, hi, every, oh, hi, listeners. <laughs> I know you're listening, Jay, but don't, okay, good. Um, hello, listeners, I am your number one favorite, uh, Mike Borg, Michael Borg Hayes, and with me, as always, as you heard earlier, is Jay Borg. Hi. And Chris Borg. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, hi, guys. Hi. I can see we're already Hello. touching on the same stuff. <laughs> oh, of course we are. We've been friends for, like... At least two years. <laughs> at least. You know. Has yeah. it been that long? At, at least. I mean, we've been doing the podcast for longer, so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be weird if we weren't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. So we watched tw- the 2011 film Manborg, uh, everyone. And uh, I think we've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> nah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or at least, at least a lot to to, to banter about. <laughs> there will um, be lots of banter, mainly banter. Uh, I guess the brief overview of this is uh, uh, this is this is the f- a film from 2011 uh, by director Stephen Kostansky, written by himself and Jeremy Gillespie. Uh, the premise is a soldier brought back to life as a cyborg fights alongside abandoned adventurers against demon hordes in a dystopian future, and uh, so it's that Robocop. sounds like. That sounds like a generic, uh, you know. It's it's generic RoboCop. <laughs> yeah, except it's a man bore. It, it doesn't <laughs> say anything of the style of the movie. No, no, no it no. doesn't. That, at least that's the IMDb, you know, description there, and it is uh, sure. It is it is lacking in the flair that that this film has. Ooh, Whether boy. it's flair you like or not, we'll get into. But it definitely has flair. I don't think anyone can argue with that. No, I would not argue with that. No. So, so just f- fuck it. Let's just get into quick takes, like real quick. <laughs> quick takes. Well, Hudson, I know you, before the podcast, just a little uh, shed a little light into the behind the scenes here. You were worried someone was going to take your quick take, so why don't you do it first? All right, Mike. Uh, let me see. What do my notes say? It's uh, G. R, uh, a backwards three. A back. Oh, oh, great! Oh, this movie is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a Super good great. Oh, I like that bet. That's a good bet, Chris. Uh, what about you, Jay Borg? Man Borg. More like awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're all just doing Justice's lines, huh? Oh, well, yeah. Justice is one Justice. of the easiest guys to kind of. <laughs> You know, I mean, yeah. you, you could do number one man, but <laughs> yeah, but like, well, so my here's here's where I have to be sad about it, because 
because I also wanted to do a justice thing, but I didn't. <laughs> I forgot to put thought into what specifically to say, and I was like, I'll just do an Australian accent. But you guys did really good <laughs> takes on lines in the movie, so I'm just going to say, uh, this won't put another shrimp on the bobby, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Generic Australian. <laughs> Hey, Mike, and I think, terrible. I think you're fusing, At the same time. Like I think you're confusing this movie with Crocodile Dundee. Oh, nor. <laughs> nor. Is that how you say no in Australian? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's an R in there. Um, there's an R in there for some reason. Like, anyway. Okay, so it sounds like this is going to be an interesting review. <laughs> By interesting, I mean, I think we might have some uh, common ground. I think we so. talk about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Hudson, how, how does this fucker start off? Uh, well, it starts off very similar to your intro, Mike, with uh, talking about Earth, the legacy of the Hell Wars, and Count Dracula holding a lone dandelion, if I uh, <laughs> remember correctly. He, uh, yeah, it is in the middle of a battle that looks like, well, you know, it, <laughs> they're going for a specific look, like World War II versus the Nazis, but these are like hell Nazis, and Count Dracula is there, and he's... Oh boy, it's it's brutal. It's yeah. brutal. Yeah, yeah. He's Count Dracula is he's this this I don't know this monster. Effectively, he's a he's a gross. He's not, he doesn't look like a Dracula necessarily, <laughs> though. He does seem to drink well, people's blood or I, life force. I'd say or something. I'd say he looks more like a Draculon, not a Dracula. It's a <laughs> fine <laughs> distinction. Important is, distinction. Is that yeah? Is that a cyberpunk version of a Dracula? <laughs> that is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> It, I, it, yeah, it's it's very. It looks like World War II. Like all of the humans, at least, are dressed up like Saving Private, Saving Private Ryan kind of shit. Yeah, I mean, it's like the humans are dying, you know, they're losing the battle, and then our we have our main hero, which I don't even think we get his name, do we? Yeah, I don't think we do. Not yeah, at the beginning, um, or ever. I guess. Yeah, ever, I don't think we actually, ever do. Yeah, yeah. I didn't that. even yeah. notice that until you mentioned it. And his, uh, an important bit happens. A lot happens in this movie really quick. The pacing yeah. is just warp speed. Crazy. So yeah. everyone's dying, and the main hero's brother dies, and he drops the line, says something like, it's about family. <laughs> Jay, <laughs> Jay, I believe the line is... <laughs> Get out of here. No! I'm not leaving you here. Come on. a good team. You're a good brother. <laughs> don't, don't go. Don't go. Don't. don't, go. don't. Remember. Don't go. It's not about the killing. It's about family. Right. Yeah. He passes him an important photo of <laughs> uh, of himself, the brother, and our, our hero here. And yeah, just a nice little photo. No, no it's... I do have to say it's about here roughly four or five minutes into the movie that I was completely sold on it. Really? <laughs> oh, totally. Oh, I bought into well, this whole thing early on. I'm like, yeah, let, this is great. Let's let's talk about the aesthetic of it real quick because it's not it's not just a, you know set in a World War Two look. It's got a genuine. Uh, what do you? Well, it, it looks a lot like Sky Captain World of Tomorrow. Yeah, I guess it kind of does. I Whatever never that saw that one. Called, but yeah. it's, it's all, all everything's it's all green, green screen. screen. Yeah. Yeah, it's all very, and not only is everything green screen, but you also get the effect of um, purposely kind of clunky costume and design. Oh, God, the costumes are amazing yeah. because they're so terrible. And and stop motion <laughs> is is blended in there, like stop motion yeah. animation style, and yet somehow, so it's like all these different types of visual effects, but they are united in the movie really well. Because yeah. everything's the, so ridiculous, yeah. you just accept and, anything yeah. that happens. And, and the, the stop motion is actually pretty decent. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's great. <laughs> um, I was watching this with one of my one of my friends, uh, actually friend of the show, guy who a guy who's drawn our our, our cartoon shirt, Johnny K, um, and he he's an illustrator and a cartoonist, and he he was pointing out like that some of the actual humans, some of the live action footage. Looks like it's filmed at 15 frames a second, which is what you would do like amateur hmm. stop motion at. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure yeah. that was intentional, which really kind of helped blend it together very well. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah like yeah, the, even really the cool. humans, the footage looks a little choppy or, or like yeah. disjointed. Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot like a, like a video game cutscene from like 10 or 15 years ago. It reminded me of. Mm. That's, yeah. a, that's yeah. a good comparison. 
Yeah, so it's got this je- this very unique look and style to it. Yeah. Like you, you look at it, you, everything looks green screen, but it looks intentional and it, it looks like they're owning what they're doing. Totally, yeah, and totally. I, definitely. And I think that's yeah. it's so good. <laughs> So our hero dies at like his brother dies right and sends gives him that line it's it's <laughs> about family not killing and and then our hero gets fucking crazy like they'll do and start shooting all the the bad super Nazis. He's got a stupid hero moment. Yeah, and then that fails. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully, and, and, because then we wouldn't get the rest of the movie. That's a good point. He he gets captured by the guys and Count Dracula and gets him and and then it cuts to the credits. And throughout the credits we just see this this US soldier being built into a, a robo, I guess. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it's not super specific. You don't really get very many good shots of it, which I, it's certainly intentional because there's a great reveal after the credits. But is that that the credit sequence is this whole fun thing of, of just seeing? I don't know. It's the creation of the man Borg. It really is. It's the origin story. We, I mean, yeah. we get the origin story right away. We don't need a. We don't need a prequel. We know how man Borg starts. This movie is what barely sixty ish minutes long. I mean, we got We got to yeah. get that origin I mean, story out of the way is, right away. The thing I appreciated about it actually was that like it covers a big story in uh, just over an hour, and the whole yeah. thing is very stripped down. Yeah, just oh, yeah. to the bare essentials of what you need, and, and yet presented in a funny way. Yeah, so I yeah. thought it was really cool. They, they they definitely knew what they were doing and what they wanted because I'm sure they had a longer cut at the beginning, and you know how you you know how hard it is to cut down your baby right to to a tight you got to tighten it up and you got to get rid of stuff you don't want to get if you really you know if you're really honest with yourself and there's just to make it the perfect piece. And I'm sure they had to do that, but they did it so well. They went above and beyond because there, there's a, I don't know, uh, what do you call it? Like a, a dumb rule, but it's technically kind of a rule of like a, a feature length is supposed to be like at least 80 minutes or something, right? Mm-hmm. This is kind of how mm-hmm. it is. But they said, fuck it, we're going to do, yeah. we'll do whatever it is, 67 or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they just did the movie the, the way they wanted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's great. They, they I mean... You know, we'll see how the ratings go, but I, I'm going to tell you, it did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Can't hide my enjoyment. No. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So the credits end, Jay. What now? What? What happens? Uh, well, the first thing we are treated to is Manborg fully formed, punching his way out of a box <laughs> while screaming. <laughs> out of a box. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And if I may, for a second, Chris, let me just draw a parallel to Late Afternoon of the Living Dead, our oh, film, yeah, where the yeah, hero totally, dies totally. and then is resurrected after the opening credits in a stronger form. I, I totally caught that, yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, just I couldn't help but notice. Um, <laughs> little plug for our own <laughs> crappy old movie. Anyway. <laughs> I, I didn't do it with, with such style, though, as Manborg does. No, you just got chopped up. And, I just got and chopped up and chop, ate a bowl of cereal. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Manborg comes out in style. He's got all this gear, like he's got a, you know, like a mechanical side of his head and chin and all these glowing lights on him. But it all kind of looks like your local cosplayer made it. Yeah. So, but it well, all works. Again, it all works. Well, well from what I read, uh, this movie was made for $1,000. No shit. Can- Canadian dollars, not even American dollars. Canadian oh dollars. Oh my God. And so mm. good. So, so like all the props and stuff look... I mean, they look like they were put together like themselves, and but it's but that's great. awesome. Yeah, yeah. And so Manborg is in a future that is now run by demons and Count Draculon. Yeah. It doesn't really say how much far into the future, but it looks pretty futuristic. It goes from like does. World War Two to like cyberpunk. Looking. Well, as as we find out later, though, that I mean, the guy who started it all is still alive in the in the later on in the hell mm-hmm. world That's so it true. hasn't been that long you know well yeah i mean but he does also have cybernetic pieces himself that's true that's true yeah it's hard to tell because the technology that exists is obviously 
very far advanced. So if if his lifespan is a normal, what we expect as a lifespan of a human, then they must have already had a lot of stuff, like technology already. But well, then also the first scene was like a World War II looking well, scene. I mean, well, to be fair, maybe Hell just has some really great gadgets. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. All possible. Very possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we get uh, demons are beating up dude in an alley. Some guy. <laughs> well, uh, an alley of like a city, probably, right? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. in the city, and that's where we see what's what's her name. Do they give her name? The woman who's a demon. Oh, uh, they do. I've got it written oh, down. Shadow Mega. Shadow Mega. Shadow yeah. Mega. Yeah, everybody has awesome names. <laughs> the naming is so good. <laughs> it's. Yeah, we got Shadow Mega, and she's fighting up some dude we don't know yet with with some Kilborgs, as they're called. All the like the henchmen of the, all the demon henchmen are called Kilborgs, which is a pretty good name too. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, they're in the cyberpunk future. They're, they're, he stumbles across this fighting situation. The bad guys have uh, hover lasers. What are they? What <laughs> like hoverboards? Anyone got a good term for these s- s- hoverboards that are just made of light? It seems. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. that's what they do. Sure. And it's so cool. But we got to say, though, that uh, Manborg was going to stop this crime because apparently he's now a crime fighter. But yeah, sure. he's he's initially stopped by our resident kung fu hero, number yes. one man. Yes. Oh, man, he's so great. <laughs> number one man. <laughs> oh, that's that is so his awesome. name, people. That is his yep. name. Do you yep. think they were writing this script and they just called him number one man in the script as they're writing like a rough draft? And they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> no, that's his name. That's it's that's a, great. And they just kept it. Probably. So Once they... Because, I, I mean, our main characters that we follow all follow, like, certain tropes that they do. And he's obviously, like, this kung fu martial arts expert hero kind of guy. Right right down to uh, the poorly dubbed voice. Right. Yeah, yeah. But he's also... He's presented like a, like a kung fu trope from a video game. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, he's, like, well, muscled yeah. and shirtless... And yeah, has the the voice that doesn't match. Yeah, that's extra low. <laughs> it's awesome. It's, it's so good. <laughs> it's it's so hard. I mean, just fucking pause the podcast and watch this movie oh, right God. now if you haven't yeah. already. Like, fuck it, man. Yeah, we'll wait. It's, it's yeah, we'll wait for you. Go ahead. Hey, while, while you're waiting, volunteer for experimentation today. <laughs> yeah, you get all kinds of signs and stuff yeah. that's that's just totally over the top. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the world they've created this this mega death city, as it's called, uh, just has so much to it, and it's yeah. all made of like either CGI or like cardboard and duct tape. I it's, feel I feel like this is what the world would look like if Guar ruled the earth. <laughs> totally, yeah, that's definitely. a great description. Definitely, I, I got a, bit, a huge Channel One Hundred and One vibe from it too. Just like yeah. it's, it's oh, like yeah. something that would come out of that, that community. So, so anyway, Manborg stumbles on these fights. He shows up, uh, a, a, a knife comes out of his hand, and he just rips a guy's face in half. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And he is so surprised by it. <laughs> Which, to be fair, I think is how you could describe his, his facial expression through most of the movie. <laughs> Sur- surprised by his own ability. Yeah. He has no idea what his new cyborg body can do, and he is just <laughs> always amazed by it. <laughs> Like, yeah. well, well up towards the end, even the end of it. Yeah, Just, yeah what? absolutely. <laughs> Whatever the combination is of the directing and the main got Manborg's performance is just gold. Because <laughs> yeah, I it really is. adored how he delivered almost every single line that he had. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. it's yeah. either like his delivery doesn't make sense in the way that you would normally say the line that he's saying. So he'll either like scream it for no reason <laughs> or, or, or just, it's, it's this, this oh, really unusual delivery that really works. Totally works. You got a nine buddy. I am. I am. Man. Borg. My name is Manborg. Manborg? More like asshole. It's, oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> um, so, okay, so in this fight, though, number one man in Manborg lose the fight, effectively. Yeah, yeah. And they, they, get, they get handcuffed or whatever and taken to 
prison or re- restraint or whatever. It's like a gladiator arena. Is. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we find that. It looks like it's just a prison with laser bars, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it turns out that they, they are going to go to an arena, yeah. which also Eventually. I think is a brilliant directorial or story plot choice, because then you can have a bunch of fighting in one scene. Yeah, that's You know, true. one backdrop. If, if you got to keep a budget, bottleneck that shit into an arena, yeah. and that's not the only place it is, but, like, well, that is a, a scene where you could do a lot of fighting. Well, yep. what else is also great about this whole prisoner, prison laser bar, gladiator arena thing is this, we also are introduced to the best character of the movie, the Baron. Oh, yeah? The Baron. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally. 100%. My favorite character of the movie. He is uh, great. Rit. Oh, God. And he's, the, he's is, a villain. He's a villain. <laughs> so he's good. also the co writer. That's Jeremy Gillespie. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Oh, I love the Baron. <laughs> how would you describe the Baron? Um, well, his teeth don't move. He's a, he's a rubber mask looking guy. He's a rubber yeah. mask looking like Hellraiser guy with big tall teeth and his eyes look like they've been replaced by like old school fuses like round <laughs> fuses yeah. Yeah, yeah that are yeah, yeah, jammed yeah. into his face <laughs> and he's hilarious <laughs> he's so good. Chris why is he hilarious oh god just every line out of his mouth is is just gold and <laughs> he he has a crush on on one of the other prisoners we're about to meet Mina yeah. like he's like uh-huh. me- He's just like mid-sentence. Oh, hello. (laughs) What's who's this? Have the prisoners processed and ready for combat. Do not fail us, Doctor. I shall take great pleasure in watching their bodies, bloodied and broken, scattered across the... Oh, hello. Who's this? Prisoner number seven, sir. Such a beautiful name. That's not my name. Yes, the perfect specimen. I'm sorry, prisoner number seven. (laughs) Where are my manners? Uh, Are you comfortable? Uh, Can I get you anything? You could get lost. Yes, such a firebrand too. You're requested in the control room, sir. What? Oh, yes. I have to do everything around here. Perhaps when your friends here are all destroyed, we can find a little more time to chat. I've got my own nightmare chamber. I'd rather be dead. Indeed, we have so much in common. Be seeing you. (laughs) (laughs) He's like this mean guy. Like, you know, in the end, he's a a badass who can fight really well, but... He's he's bumbling over his words trying to impress prisoner number seven, as he always calls her. Yeah. But she'll always be prisoner number one. Yeah. <laughs> to, to him, it's, yeah. It, it's a bunch of lines like that. It's, uh, it's at some point, so we skip. Okay, so we meet a brother and a sister combo, Mina and her brother Justice, who's the Australian guy we all kind of mimic during who, a quick uh, Who looks like Billy Idol. Yeah. And, yeah, he's, and he's loves, a Billy, Australian Billy Idol. And, and, and he loves to dance. Yeah, it does. Why don't you chill out, okay? I can't catch a break around here. What the hell are you doing here, anyone? He killed one of theirs. I trust him. He can help us. Okay. Mina, I'm sorry I wasn't here for you. Yeah. Oh! What are you staring at? You look at my sister like that again? And I'll kill you. <laughs> um, all right, so we may, we meet these other prisoners. They're they're there with us, and um, but they get they all get shipped off to the arena like right away. Well, Mike, I believe the technical term for the arena is the Terror Opticon. Who is it? I didn't catch that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Everything has a perfect name. It does. <laughs> it's all Guar, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So amazing. Fuck, man. <laughs> um. So, so yeah, this is so this is where we kind of learn about each character, and this this is like the introductory fight. They have to fight these uh, uh, what are they called? Some hyper bikers or something some like that? Things. Yeah, they're like yeah. your your standard demon guys on bikes kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, hover bikes. That they're hover bikers. Um, and so they have to fight them. But this is where we learn kind of like the characteristics and the fighting style of each of our our friends. So, Jay, number one man you kind of touched on, his 
how would you describe the way he fights and the way he's filmed while fighting? Um, again, kind of video game ish, right? Yeah, I got total. Yeah. I got total Mortal Kombat vibes from him. Yeah, from the look yeah, yeah. And everything. Just, well, he's like he'll if he'll do a jump kick, his body will freeze and his body will like move across and kick <laughs> someone across the screen, kind of a thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and it's very you know reminiscent of that. Now Hudson, I think you fall into this next character's style quite well, Mina. Oh, thanks, Mike. Yeah, she uh, she uses knives like throwing daggers. And, yeah, and a mean but, glare. Yeah, yes, but but what is her trope? She's an obvious trope. Oh shit! I don't know what you know. I totally not, not so obvious to me. <laughs> she, I, shit! I thought. All right, uh, she, well, she's totally an anime character. You, oh yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of yeah. anime sounds okay, and that, like you see her face sense. freeze and the backgrounds flying by. Yeah, yeah. The background's got those lines by. She's like, that, shoo, 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 you know, I, it's I, whatever, and it's like, mm-hmm. you know, it's very, it's super Dragon Ball Z anime yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, which um, it's funny you mention that the guy who uh, did the voice <laughs> of Number One Man. Actually, uh-huh. was the narrator from Dragon Ball Z. Well, the American version, I guess. Really? Well, well not just yeah. the narrator. Oh, was he something he, else? I don't know. I just I just quickly read his IMDb page. Like, oh, oh yeah, neat. Well, he he's the narrator. He's also Gohan. Oh, is he really? Oh shit. Yeah, which right. huh. which I've never seen a single episode of Dragon <laughs> Ball Z, but I believe that's a main character. I believe that is Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but he's done a ton of voice work. Yeah. Like this guy is there. Like they must have been friends with him or something, or that's where the thousand that's where the dollars thousand went. Bucks went. Because uh, he he, I mean, he has so many voice acting credits. It is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. The amount of work this guy, 527 credits. Jeez. Wow. This guy has. Yeah. So they, they, they got, that's their, that's their like, you know, <laughs> guy. And then I guess I will talk about justice real quick because justice is a gunfighter <laughs> and likes to dance and spin around and point his guns without looking and shoot pink blazer bullets out of it. Well, <laughs> I, I love the first part where we see the, like how much justice loves to dance. They're being, you know, lined up and walked out to the, the arena and he just starts dancing in the line as they're like marching to their death. <laughs> yeah. And one of the robot guards is like, no dancing. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck the robot guards, dude. The robot guards are so good. <laughs> it's like it's like a shredder head on top of a oh, floating God. something. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're floating guards. Mm-hmm. They're awesome. Yeah, and they're all stop motion. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, but but yeah, they're they're fighting. They're trying to take out these hover biker guys. They do a pretty uh, good they're job. They're doing they're doing a great job mm-hmm. of it. Um, Except for the man, one character we weren't introduced to that's, you know, you gotta have somebody die. Wait, what? Did that, someone die? Yeah, there's like one guy that's with them. You don't even see them until they get to the arena, I don't think. And he's just there to show what the hover bikers can do. Oh, we right, never, right, right. We never right. learned his name. He, don't, he doesn't do shit. He just dies in the first th- three seconds of the fight. I'm like, oh, all right. These guys are, quote, unquote, dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> well... Well, there's a problem. Well, not a problem, but like Manborg is just standing there. They, the other guys are like, "Get the what the fuck, man! Why don't you aren't you going to help us in a second or at any point, please?" And uh, he ends up having to accidentally help them. Yeah, he gets this giant gun that pops out of his arm. Like all these pieces form a gigantic weapon. It's huge. It's huge on his on his hand. But again, he can't control it. So he's surprised. And he starts wildly firing bullets everywhere and nearly kills Mina. <laughs> he obliterates the person. Like, the person he, had, he shoots starts out as a regular live-action human, but then through his bullets becomes this obvious, like, stop-motion like, just just, just <laughs> Play-Doh of red or whatever it is just <laughs> spraying everywhere and it is it's beautiful um, and, and then they win and <laughs> we find Man- Manborg on his back not able to get up <laughs> well he's still shooting his gun isn't he yeah, he's still yeah, firing yeah, his he, gun he he's still like, like, like a turtle help me <laughs> <laughs> it's so uh, good yeah oh, 
And those are just the type of shenanigans Justin, Justice does not like. <laughs> ah, that's one of my favorite lines. God. Justice calls, <laughs> what are those, what were those shenanigans out there? <laughs> yeah, they get mad because they, they're they not sure he didn't do it on purpose, I guess, or whatever. Like, he's just not a good fighter. Yeah. Or they think he's not a good fighter, and they get mad because he almost killed Mina. <laughs> so they're not sure whose side yeah. Manborg is really on. Those are some pretty fancy shenanigans you pulled back there, Manborg. Just what in the hell are you? Anyway. Are you a spy? Did Dr. Scorpius send you? You're a human. You come here to kill us? I am. Don't answer that. Asshole. Jesus. He almost got Mina killed. I saw it. Son of a bitch. You almost got my sister killed? Oh, oh, I can't believe this. What kind of a man would do such a thing? He's not a man. He's one of them. You're right, Mina. He probably is. <sighs> Shit! I am not one of them. I am something else. We didn't survive this long for you to dance in here in your expensive silver boots and your fancy shenanigram outfits and get us all killed! Get out of here! Get out! Take a hike! Get out of here! If you're not one of us, just take a hike! Take a hike! Get out of here! Yeah, so it's, it's weird because so they like send him out of the prisoners area or something or yeah, something. they say you're not welcome here, get out. But and he does leave kind of. <laughs> yeah, like isn't this a prison? But he is a prisoner still, so I don't know. Yeah, well they instantly just. I mean, this is where we kind of meet. The, we find out the Baron has a crush on Mina. Oh, but, oh, but which? <laughs> <laughs> yes, wait. But Ma- He's wait, talking to. Do- well, this is another important character. He's talking to Doctor Scorpius. Who, That's true. Who is the Baron is talking to Doctor Scorpius, and Doctor Scorpius is the human who has all the like cybernetic pieces on him and stuff. Who's forced to work for Draculon, right? Yeah. And so the Baron comes to uh, Scorpius and wants advice on how to talk to Mina, <laughs> <laughs> and he gets really nervous and busts out a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the doctor says, I thought you quit. And he just kind of like waves him off, like, get out of here. Yeah. It's like, not you two. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I love it. Uh, oh, the Baron. Please give us more Baron. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, but so, so Mangborg, like, leaves, I guess, but then just gets instantly sent back out into the arena. Yeah. On his own. Well, he's got to fight the champion. Yeah. I mean, and with champion. over 2,073 humans killed, come on. Yeah. Definitely the champion. Well, how how would you describe the champion then, Chris? At least by looks. Oh, God. Well, he's another stop-motion creature. He's, what, 30 feet tall? Kind of like <laughs> something like that. Skeletal with, like, what are those missile launchers or something on his shoulders? I'm, you know, and... He's like if you like combined that. a giant skeleton with a Battletech mech. He's, mm-hmm. He has yeah. these rockets... Mm-hmm. Built into him, but he's a skeleton. But but he also, and a lot of the stop motion monsters kind of look like this. I think it looks like you took like a T one thousand toy and mashed ground beef around it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's just they're all really gross, but in a beautiful way. Oh, they're yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah, they're they're vulgar looking. I guess you could say, <laughs> but not rude. No, no, not rude by any means. <laughs> Yeah, so he has to. So Manborg has to take on the champion, and you know, through a, a fun fight, he wins. Yeah, well, he, he I mean, beats the champion. Well, yeah, with with a little help from his elbow missiles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the gun doesn't he's work. Used, yeah, he tries to use his gun that he that appeared before, and nothing happens. Yeah. He doesn't know how to activate it. He has an elbow <laughs> missile. <laughs> Blows oh up his God. head, and the yeah, Baron is it's, pissed. Oh, I'm not happy. not happy. And on on top of the Baron being mad about that, we also learn that number one man is the guy who ripped out his eyes. <laughs> yeah, so with that's one why of my, he's got those, with, those fuses in there. Yeah, with yeah. one of my favorite lines from the whole movie. Oh, no one's ever won against the champion before. How could we let this happen? 
I guess there's a new champion in town now. Shut up. Don't think I've forgotten about you. How could you? I ripped out both your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's so great. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yep. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so this is also where we learn, do a little bit more learning, because uh, Manborg is being punished for winning against the champion, and he's tied up in some laser restraints, and with Dr. Scorpius is there, is supposed to do something with him, I guess. But that's where we find out that Dr. Scorpius built Manborg. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, in, the reason. In a shocking, shocking twist that <laughs> you could pretty much read from about 20 minutes prior. <laughs> yeah, though I really like this scene because it starts out with Manborg being really pissy against Doctor Scorpius <laughs> and being really mad. But within a minute, this scene's like a minute long, yeah, maybe. Yeah. And with it be- between the beginning and the end, Manborg goes from like "I'm gonna fucking kill you" to "I understand what you did." <laughs> <laughs> well, and he, in the beginning, he's like almost sarcastic with them. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, he really is. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's his delivery. Manborg is no. is talking, and he's just like, "Oh, really? Uh, uh-uh. uh." You know, like it's just stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> trying to make Scorpius mad. It's <laughs> fucking great. Uh, well, well, eventually Scorpius uh, gives Manborg his future cassette. <laughs> uh, I wish I had a future and, cassette. Oh man, no I kidding. want one too. And, and they do a secret handshake. And then it's time to go. Yes, the Man, handshake. Man leaves. The handshake. <laughs> he like tries to stick out his hand, but only sticks out two fingers. <laughs> and, and Scorpius doesn't know what to do with his hand, so he's just kind of like, eh. It's just another one of those awkward, funny things. Yeah. Uh, but, but real quick, the future cassette that he gives him is just a, a, a tape cassette. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah. with some like. That's been painted black with a marker and some like weird like texture that they put on it, like with rolled up cardboard or something. It's fucking. I love the aesthetics of everything. Yep. Okay, so he gives them that. Gives you know they do the handshake and then the prisoners escape. Mm-hmm. Like they they've cast off Manborg these other prisoners, but he comes back in. Uh, when one of the the guards is about to like zap someone or something, right? Mm-hmm. And then Manborg just kicks down the fucking door, <laughs> smashes the guard, and then lets them all out. And then they all escape on some more hover bikes. Yes, they do. <laughs> Luckily, they have to get through a future lock, but... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's fine. It's yeah. fine. They, yeah, they escape on the hover bikes. I gotta tell you, Manborg is no good in any sort of sneaking around. So no, I love that. No, <laughs> they're trying to hide and sneak, and he's still talking at full volume. <laughs> <laughs> there, those are what we need. Come on. How do you make them hover? What? It's the hover converter. What was that? Nice job, moron. Oh my god. So so as they're escaping, the Baron comes back in with the advice he got from Dr. Scorpius. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he he's brought he's brought prisoner number seven a little gift that he wants to give her. Yeah, it's sweet. <laughs> what is so it, nice. Jack? So flowers. Nice. He brings flowers. <laughs> oh yeah. So the Cenobite looking guy comes in with a, a bunch of flowers and discovers that she's gone and they're they're all gone and so he's so dejected he sits down <laughs> and he's talking yeah. to himself and and he says sometimes i think the universe wants me to be alone called her prisoner number seven but to me she was always prisoner number one <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh. well and, then, and then Count Dracula appears like in his giant head on some view screen or something or hologram. Yeah. What have you got there behind your back? Those aren't for me, are they? The prisoners! They must have Utilize these in their escape? <laughs> <laughs> no, the prisoners must have left them here. 
<laughs> it's so good. So so then we get this like so it cuts back to the prisoners escaping on the hover bikes and there's like more like hover light board guys and like cop cars that are hovering chasing them through the the streets of Megadeth City and <laughs> it's just all this like awesome cardboard CGI city stuff and it's like action packed fast paced chase scenes with guns and explosions and it's 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 just a real blast i'd say i don't yeah. know if you guys could argue if you yeah. want but it's a, no a fun, it's quick like, Do just not quick disagree. and fun there's a lot of good stuff in there i don't know not much to say about it you just watch it mm-hmm. yep <laughs> i guess <laughs> and so yeah so they they get they get away from the city basically where at the meantime i've got a note here because you cut back to the doctor and op, doc uh, and count draculon has found out they've escaped obviously yeah and count draculon seems to have this ability to just like appear anywhere and like have these tentacles or something sure. that come out yeah. of the walls or whatever. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and they like so his these tentacles come out of the, like the walls and like just wrap around the doctor and capture him. So he's obviously in trouble for helping them escape. Mm, good thing he already gave Manborg the future tape. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So whatever. So we get a glimpse that the doctor is going to get have some sort of punishment now because of this. Um, and we get actually a little flashback which, at some point here. Which I gotta say, I really enjoy that they they do give the backstory for each of our characters. Yeah, and it doesn't take yeah, much, they right? Yeah. These little backstory glimpses are like one punch, or not one punch man, <laughs> number one man. <laughs> <laughs> Says a couple lines, and we get a little flashback of him too at some point. But they're, uh, each flashback's like 20 seconds, yeah, 30 seconds long. long. They don't. They they get right to the point. We find out that Mina is is BFFs with the the uh, Shadow. What's her name? Shadow Master? No, Shadow. It wasn't something. It, it wasn't the Shadow Demon. Wasn't Mega. her mom? Mega. Right? No, I think they're they're friends. Because at some point when they come into the the prison, she calls her Bud like kind of meanly though. She's like, "Hey, Bud." Okay. And like they have like, some, they make some mean Ooh. eyes at each other. Okay. But that they're like, I think they're just but they're just buds, I guess. Okay. And and then some like lifelong friends, and then Do- Count Draculon kidnapped, you know, Shadow Mega before she was Shadow Mega, and then did whatever the fuck you do to someone to make them into well, that. Well, I believe, Shadow Mega. I believe, I believe, Mike, I believe her name was pre Shadow Mega. That's probably really what her name was. Yeah. You know what? They did show the birth certificate in the flashback. It yeah. did say that. Yeah. You're right. Now that I think about it, I was having a justice moment where I couldn't read it. <laughs> I oh. also found regarding justice when they're escaping the uh, the city into the slums, you know, and there's all the people. Oh, he's like so justice lines, is yeah. uh, disgusted by all of this, yeah. and <laughs> he's looking they around. Going, made out of they're, newspaper. They're poor. Yeah, there's burger think, wrappers everywhere. I, uh, I think that guy's got cabbage on his head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I might take that cabbage off your head. Oh, he can't even hear a word I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, some pretty good little liners there. <laughs> but yeah, it's I. So okay, so yeah, they're in the what do you want to call it? The slums, I guess, of Megadeth City. And they, they, they pry up a grate and they go underground. Well, well and no, no. Hide under well, there. Mike, you see, oh, they pry sorry. up a grate. I'm sorry, Hudson. Hang on. Go there's ahead like, and say there, it. There's like some steel beams or something covering the grate. And number <laughs> one man is picking them up. And he's like like lifting it, like lifting weights to try to try to impress Mina. Yeah. He's like, yeah, pretty strong, yeah. huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we should, we should, I guess we should mention that number one man, we don't know if there's a requited love, but number one man obviously has a thing for Mina. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's not in like a, a weird, creepy way. It's just a general like he obviously has affection he's, for he's her. He's trying to impress her. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes. I thought Hudson, you really wanted to talk about the guy that was oh. hanging out by well, the grates. Well, they were going that. into. Oh yeah. Oh, the little guy. He's <laughs> 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 so great. And, and Justice's man, Justice's reaction. <laughs> the guy's like. <laughs> It's okay, it's just me. Come on, guys. I gotta go pet that little guy. (laughs) (laughs) It is. This this little guy looks like it's like a it's like a it's a little person. I think there could be some CGI, but it looks kind of like little like a little person um, (laughs) dressed as like basically like an Ewok. I guess. (laughs) I guess. Yeah. (laughs) Or a Jawa, like a mix between the two. Techno future Ewok. (laughs) (laughs) Talks like that. (laughs) 
He's got a spear and shit and some goggles. And they pull up on the hover bike. And ju- it stops and Justice immediately goes, I gotta pet that little guy. <laughs> 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 oh, it's wonderful. Oh, God. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Did he, did he, though? Did we ever see if he pet I, him? I don't I, think he did. I don't think I we see. I don't think we saw it. No. I would have really liked the, the little guy to, like, jab at him with his fucking spear like a... <laughs> he walk <laughs> Oh, I don't... Any, anyway... <laughs> So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Okay, I got, I got this, guys. Oh All man. Right. Okay. There's so many great so, parts. So, so they're underground. Yeah, this is your basic training. It's your, tra- they're, they're getting yeah. ready. You know, they're it's the training montage. Well, no, well, hold on, Jay. They start out hiding, but but Mina like pretty quickly goes up for air and then leaves. Mm-hmm. Because she wants to go save her, her old friend. Yeah, she wants to take on Draculon. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. and she sneaks off while nobody's paying, while no one's really paying attention to her. They're, you know, Justice is hungry. So he and number <laughs> one man are trying to make some mac and cheese. <laughs> and, you know, they're having trouble. Justice has trouble reading the instructions. And number yeah. one man is trying to train him. You, you boil four cups of water. <laughs> and, uh, so- and. He's just so impatient. Justice yeah. is so impatient. This, we do learn this important character trait of Justice that he he is he is not super literate. He, <laughs> he, he can do it, but he's slow at it. And which is nothing wrong with that, you know. Hey, and, and really, some people have I, hard time. I do appreciate though that there is a great PSA in all this. Is that we see the dangers of what happens when you pour your noodles in before the water boils. That's true. They, <laughs> they explode. So. I mean, yeah. it's a small explosion, but, you know, still... It's still there. Still dangerous. It's still there, and that is important. Mm-hmm. So all of you out there who are unfamiliar how to make a box of crafts, <laughs> <laughs> boil first. Okay, yeah, so Mina has left, because Count Dracula, like, appeared to her and, like, challenged her to save her friend, mm-hmm. you know, Shadow Mega. So she leaves off, and then, then, then the boys find out she's left after trying to make mac and cheese. <laughs> uh, and and decide they're going to go after her and help her. And so, you know. Oh, well, we got to get the training montage first. So they do training. That's what I'm yeah, getting at. Yeah, yeah, they do some training. Like, so they got the fun training montage. Oh, shit. No. Also, the future cassette comes into play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is this is this is what starts the, the training montage. And Scorpius is like weirdly. He's like a force ghost. He's not just yeah. a recording. No. Yeah. yeah. He can he can interact with with Manborg. <laughs> yeah, and, and stays around. Like, he starts out, he puts the cassette in his chest and presses play, because apparently he's got a fucking boombox on his chest. <laughs> Plays Manborg. Come on. Do you think Dr. Scorpius would omit that very important function? That's when you know point. ahead of time, good point. you've got the future tape. You right. something to play That's the true. future tape. It's not a coincidence. No, he is the guy no. who made him, so obviously he yeah. would have put in that and then knew that he could give him that that device, yeah. the future tape, to, you know. And the whole point is to say that Manborg is the only one who can stop Dracula, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. He's the only one who's ever fought him before and not died, technically. Right. Yeah. Though yeah. he would have. If not so for Scorpius. Yeah, so there's, you know, there's that, but whatever. Whatever. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, you're right, Jay, though. He, he, he starts out as a hologram. It looks like an Obi-Wan Kenobi hologram. Uh, but then just continues to be there as a hologram. <laughs> yeah. because, because why not? You just roll with it at this point. Yep. Oh, yeah. You're like, wait a minute. Ah, fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. <doesn't laughs> it's like what my brain did. <laughs> so, yeah, they do a fun training montage. And, Chris, do you have any highlights of that that you, you wanted to talk about? Uh, just that, uh, you know, we get number one man says, It's never too late to be a hero. <laughs> you bog is me, boy. <laughs> he has some great true. lines yeah, in this movie. Yeah. I think it was yeah. a good one, man. And You've got a lot of killing ahead of you. Good luck. It's not about the killing. It's about family. We're a family now. No, Manborg says it's not Does about family. Oh, that. I didn't write down who says it. Yeah. All right, well. Because that bring comes back to the whole picture. Yeah. You know what? And I'm going to prove it because I'm I, I've edited it. <laughs> in. Oh, yeah, right we heard it. I mean, like, okay, you know oh, wait, what? We we did hear it, or we're about to hear we it. We did hear it. 
Yeah. Oh shit! And so I'm, it was back before this. Well, do you want to just put it in here I again? Totally get it now. Again? Sure. Just this is to, the listener just, wanting. Okay, fine. Just to be clear. Ju- just to be clear. Better safe than sorry. You've got a lot of killing ahead of you. Good luck. It's not about the killing. It's about family. We're a family now. Thanks for that. Yeah. So, wait. Did we? Did I already do it a second time? <laughs> You did. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good fan. <laughs> uh, okay. <sighs> so now we got to get into the fucking fighting. Yeah, we're heading into the climax. Yeah, so Mina is fighting Shadow Mega right now. Like, when we cut to her, she's she's found Shadow Mega, and Shadow Mega's fighting her. Yep. It's her best friend. They don't want to fight, but they got to fight. They got that's to. what happens. Yeah. I mean, that happens amongst the three of us all the time. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's, that's why true. that's why Paul left the show. Yeah. All right. Well, Paul's dead. So mm-hmm. <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> he didn't actually leave. It's all it's all been fake. We yeah. all do these <laughs> digital voices. We've used past <laughs> recordings. Yeah. We did a real John Lennon on him. Mm. Well, well, to be fair, Paul is kind of a man Borg now. So not quite mm-hmm. dead. Yeah, the jetpack is part of his body. <laughs> <laughs> but unfortunately, we installed it on his chest instead of his Yeah, back. it's not it's not good for him. It just knocks him over. <laughs> it it burned his dick off a long time ago. <laughs> oh, it's <not> Yeah, <laughs> poor Paul. <laughs> Oh, that, that, uh, uh, okay. that test. So, <laughs> so anyway... Uh, <laughs> So, oh god. So so okay, so Mina's fighting Shadow Mega, Manborg finds Count Draculon, um, number one man is fighting the Baron. Justice is there somewhere too. I think, well Justice helps Mina. Yeah, Justice and Mina fight the that, demon. That's where we Yeah, that's Shadow where we get Mega. the uh, that's where we get the line that I referenced in my quick take with the grenades. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Alright, buddy, come on, sound it out. G Ah uh, a backwards three. Grenades, grenades, grenades! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, because Mina's Mina's knocked over. The Shadow Mega's like holding her down, gonna take her out, and she Mina's like pointing at these grenades across the way. <laughs> he does like the bit is that he doesn't even recognize them as grenades. They look like grenades. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love how the crowd, by the way, while everyone's fighting in the arena, because oh, yeah, they're back in happens, the arena. Yeah. The crowd is still there. <laughs> yeah, they just wait there for another fight. Yep. Cause, yeah, because when so when Manborg finds the the Count Draculon, they're like, well, let me take. They, they have a little a little witty banter, and then Count Draculon just fucking punches him out a window. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and into the arena, and it's yeah. fucking great. It's a huge tower. He falls and hits the ground. Yeah, he falls stories upon stories. Well, I mean, upon stories. I mean, come on. To be fair, Draculon is not going to show off you know his fighting skills without an audience. Oh, hell no. Nah. Yeah, come on. That's just a waste of his prowess. <laughs> yeah. Um, though that Mina grenade thing with Justice thing is so good because Justice <laughs> eventually reads the grenades. He grabs one, pulls the pin, shoves it in Shadow Mega's mouth, and then number one man comes through and just fucking just, just <laughs> drop kicks him. Uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> Shadow Mega in, 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 out of the way and just explodes and it. it's fucking great. Blood goes everywhere. Very cool. Yeah. Because oh yeah, because Shadow Mega this far played by by an attractive live action woman has suddenly turned into this stop motion like cosmic horror creature. Mhm. Mm-hmm. And like it's really gross and fun, so, you know, then she dies. She gone. And Baron dies here too, right? Like Yeah, Baron yeah, dies. Yeah, yes, because number one man in. kills the Baron. Uh, he kicks him. I think he like kicks him into a machine, and then he. Explodes. He kind of dies. Yeah. In a, if, if if you remember, no holds barred. It's the same thing mm-hmm. with the, uh, the the TV exec. He is kicked backwards into a uh, bank yeah. of machinery and is electrocuted. Yeah, that was sad so, for me. It's very sad. Yeah. Well, you know what are you going to do? Baron he had to back. go. Yeah, yeah, the Baron was so good. But uh, but meanwhile, while. Uh, Manborg fights Draculon. It continues mm-hmm. his theme of the prior weapon he used to win. Just totally ineffective. Those el- yep, yep. Uh, elbow missile just swatted aside. Mm-hmm. Oh. Doesn't even matter. Oh, so, sorry, geez. I don't want to dwell on the Baron's death too much. I'm trying to move us along. I know okay, that makes sense. sense. We're all we were, we're, yeah. So we brought yeah. the energy down by bringing. It. I tried to skip yeah. it and then we got it back. Yeah. And I just well, we had to cover it. it. It's important for our, our listeners to know. But let's just move on. 
Oh, God. Draculon man. cuts off Manborg's arm. Mm-hmm. We can yeah. start by talking about that. Oh, God. <laughs> it was a useful arm. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he's going to kill Manborg, but I believe Mina throws a knife at him? The uh, I believe yeah, I believe she throws the distraction knife. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And, and then Manborg shoves a sword through uh, his well, chest. Well, first, Draculon shoots a beam of pure electron energy at Mina, yeah. which causes uh, instant cardiac arrest. Blast, I didn't Mina. want to talk yeah. about that either. Well, we yeah. have to. It's our job. <sighs> yeah. Let's get through a mic. We're, we're almost finished. <sighs> yep. And so Draculon, or I'm sorry, Manborg ends up cutting off Draculon's head. Yep. Yes. Yep. And, and it's great. The threat is now vanquished. However, we still have this <sighs> Mina being dead problem. Yeah. <sighs> like, I'm, I'm amazed that they kill off a main character at the end of this film. But they don't kill Mina. Oh, wait, what? No. What happened? No. Nope. Well, it's Manborg takes this glowing liquid out, right? Which I think I think Scorpius told him the power is within him, like yeah. all along or something. <laughs> There's a lot of really good yeah. tropes in this. Like that's obviously a, a, a generic cliche trope that they fucking play so well in mm-hmm. it. He's like, "You'll it's inside of you. You'll know what to do with it when it th- the time comes." Yeah. And then it comes. He's like, "Oh, I have this this heart serum." I yep. can pour into her mouth, and and Mina comes back to life. Yep. Right, and then and then credits roll, and everything's good. Well, no, or, <laughs> we get what? some major revelations right at the end here. What do you mean? Well, Doctor Scorpius shows up along with his brother in, in <laughs> Force Ghost. Oh yeah, oh, this man, is Manborg, Manborg's brother. Yeah, Manborg's brother. <laughs> And he, he died says, at the beginning, remember? <laughs> the brother, I know you're going to put the quote in here, so that's oh, totally God. fine. But he, he says, good job, there is no heaven. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Manborg, who's now given all of his life energy to Mina, is sputtering and goes, there is no heaven, and dies. <laughs> hey, bro, it's me, brother. Remember, I died at the beginning. I just want to say you did great out there. There's no heaven. There's no heaven? Oh, yeah. Yeah, by, by all energy, you mean the heart serum he put into her is right. what was keeping him alive, apparently. Yes. And so Manborg <laughs> dies. And as we're waiting, as we're waiting for like, okay, so something, because okay, so they just saved Mina with the thing. So we're going to save Manborg now. He's not actually dead. The the Kilborgs just start coming back to life out of the ground in the rubble. Mm-hmm. And... And then we just get a, see, a, a shot of our three remaining heroes prepping for more battle. So I, I, I got I to gotta say real quick, backing up a little bit before we talk about right. the depressing ending, is that the whole movie we, find, we, we didn't really touch on that Count Draculon is literally from hell. Dr. Scorpius, yes. through, you know, because of science and mistakes were made, opened a portal to hell, releasing Count Draculon <laughs> and all the yeah. Kilborgs. We so, skipped that back. Uh, that flashback was so, so fucking so, good. <laughs> so great. So we've got a literal hell, but there is no heaven. Right. And Manborg Yo, dies. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Manborg <laughs> dies Holy with this fuck. panic look on his face. As, <laughs> oh yeah. God. What? 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 No heaven? <laughs> and and then all the Kilborgs come out of the rubble and right. our heroes yeah. like. And then we get we get the, our heroes posing for another battle and then credits. And yep. it's fucking great. That's great. Like, I mean, like it's sad, but like it's like a, I don't know, it's a very powerful ending. It's it, honestly, I, it makes me think of uh, Late Afternoon of the Living Dead's ending. Yeah, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's 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 very reminiscent of that, where the remaining characters square off against uh, an army of foes. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, did it's they true. see yeah. Late Afternoon of the Living Dead? There are a lot of parallels. <laughs> Maybe they did. Hmm. <laughs> Our movie did come out first. Hmm. That's okay. <laughs> Well, that's it. Our movie had a lot of tropes in it, too. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did. It did. Yeah, so yeah, that's the credits. So that's, I mean, that's the fucking end. So uh, I guess uh, there's only one. I mean, do you guys, is there anything else you want to add? Did we skip over anything? I mean, no, I don't think so. It? Rating yeah. time, I guess. Rating All right. time. All right. Rating time. Da, 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 da. Uh, record yeah. scratch. Wait a minute. Did we forget something? Did we? You're probably wondering how we forgot about Biocop. <laughs> What's Biocop, Chris? Oh, yeah, what is Biocop, Chris? <laughs> well, at the end of Manborg, they threw on a fake trailer for a movie called 
Bayonara. <laughs> Which, oh, as much God. as I enjoyed Manborg, man, would I like to see Biocop. <laughs> oh my oh, God. God, Biocop. It's just this cop that's uh, somehow through <laughs> an accident or something is a, a mutated blob in a, 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 in a cop outfit who's in constant pain. <laughs> but everybody treats him like a cop still. <laughs> Why am I still alive? <laughs> he looks like an actually gross Toxic Avenger, right? Like, yeah. it's basically Toxic Avenger as a cop, but instead of it just being the rubber mask of Toxie, it's a disgusting, dripping, fucking <laughs> oozing blob just as if someone was dumped oh. into acid. Right. Like, it's so fucking gross. <laughs> oh, he just wants to die. <laughs> yeah. He, there's a shot where he, like, he's in, they're in the middle of a bus and he turns his gun on puts it yes. in his mouth and tries to sh and shoots himself in the head. I was literally laughing at the, like uh, out loud he, in he, my living room he, when he, he turns can't. the gun on himself and tries to shoot <laughs> yeah, himself. He, he and he can't, can't die. <laughs> he can't die. Yeah, he, he successfully <laughs> shoots himself, <laughs> but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> he's like, there's, there's like a scene where like the the the, <laughs> the chief or something like that's like, you're the new guy, huh? Why am I alive? Shut the fuck up! Get your act together, Biocop! I can't let somebody off the street with a gun who's got emotional problems! Please kill me! <laughs> <laughs> He's always t talking to his partner, please kill me! <laughs> And it, oh it, it's God. it's beautiful because it starts out with all these jokes that we're talking about. And also, I'd like to mention that the gang he's supposed to be fighting are called Super Burly Bros. <laughs> yeah. <that's so laughs> They're right. selling drugs, like spelled yeah. the wrong way or something. Yeah, D-R-U-G-G-Z. <laughs> Nothing gets you high like drugs. Oh, uh, and yeah. I, I love... He that there's the, you know, the uh, inevitably in the trailer, there's like the super villain, right? Yeah. And the oh, super God. villain can't manage to kill him, right? Yeah. And eventually stops trying and just wants to be friends with him. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it takes a twist because, like, okay, so he's got a partner. Biocop is a partner of the movie, the, the, the trailer. And, and at some point, his, his, his partner. <laughs> It's like, you haven't talked for 15 years, Biocop, but I know we're best friends. <laughs> and he, like, shakes his hand, and Biocop's like, get away from me! <laughs> and then he accidentally absorbs his partner, <laughs> and he's got, like, his head and his chest from that on. And that incident, that incident is when... The <laughs> When the police chief demands his gun and his badge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But yeah, then then he has to fight this like Ninja Turtle style villain. And he doesn't want to. He just lets himself get beat up because he wants, <laughs> he to, wants die. to die. And then and basically the villain takes it I, it seems like he takes him hostage to be his buddy. Yeah. And the, the narrator ends the fucking trailer yeah, just, as this like you've been you <laughs> like the, you some <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say it. Oh, uh, wait, hold on. Like the look on his face, because they go cruising in. They go cruising in the villain's hot rod, and yeah. he's driving. And isn't he just saying "biocop" over and over again? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah maybe. Yeah, but, I think he is. But the, but the narrator's like, sometimes you meet someone you know you'll be friends with for life, or something like that. And biocop's just like, no. <laughs> he looks at the camera like he wants to die. It's. Amazing. Oh man, it's so good. Oh, please make yeah. that movie. Please. <laughs> God, Steven. Please. Make that movie. Please. Start the Kickstarter. You did that for the void. You got a Kickstarter. It worked. Yeah. Oh god. <sighs> um, do Biocop. All right. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I got to say though, real, real quick what? before we get into the quick takes, did anyone read the even the copyright notice at the end after Biocop in the credits? No. No. Oh, my God. Even that is like this whole thing about, you know, copyright notice and gets into some crazy shit. <laughs> and then they do the same thing in French afterwards. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I urge you, watch the whole thing, including the copyright violation notice at the end. It's wow. so good. <laughs> copyright it's violation like, notice. Yeah, it's like, it's so good. I will check oh that out. God. <laughs> I, I also want to point out really quick, uh, just kind of quickly glancing through um, Stephen um, um, Kostansky's stuff here. He's got credits for like doing prosthetic makeup for Star Trek Discovery. Yeah, yeah, they did a ton. Of, uh, these I mean, guys he's have got done a ton, ton of stuff. stuff. I, yeah, I, I think his background stuff. is effects. 
I'm pretty yeah. sure his background right. is in effects. Twelve episodes of Hannibal with effects, like tons of this shit. Yeah, they've they've worked like not just him. I think there are a couple other the other guys like the writers and stuff have all worked on some pretty high profile stuff together. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's it's so good. Like um, oh shit, he directed Leprechaun Returns, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the new one. Sadly, Fuck. no Warwick Davis though. Well, anyway. Why don't we actually get into ratings? Rating time! Mike, what are we rating this in? Oh, fuck. I forgot we do that. (laughs) Oh, boy. Well, I was hoping for either shenanigrams or... Oh, shenanigrams Shenanigrams. is great. Shenanigrams is very good. All right. All right. Uh, Hudson, you're the one I'm super curious about. (laughs) What? Out of one out of a hundred shenanigans, did you ra- would you rate Manborg? Oh man, I um, I'm gonna go right up front and say it's not perfect. There's not really much of a plot to speak of, and and the whole thing is kind of like watching just a series of of uh, video game cutscenes, you know. But having said that, I love the art direction and the amazing use of stop motion mixed with a cheap ass green screen. I mean, it looks. It's cheap, but in this really, really amazing way. It's so good. And, I mean, the movie sucked me in within the first five minutes, and it, the whole thing just got better from there. The characters are great. The Baron is amazing, and his crush on Mina, probably my favorite favorite bit of the movie. Mm-hmm. And the movie ends just as it kind of starts to run out of steam. So, uh, yeah, so the, the length is, is, is perfect, and it just moves along at a nice clip. It's amazing. Everyone should watch it. So I was going to rate it like an 89, but then you toss Biocop at the end. Yeah, don't <laughs> forget Biocop. So I've got to like merge that in too, which raises it to 95 shenanigans. Yeah, baby. Oh, man, yeah. this movie, this movie, oh, shit. this movie was so fucking good. Yeah. I, I loved it. Oh my goodness. Uh, Jay, how about you, my boy? Yeah, I mean, no secret. We didn't say hardly a negative thing at all about this whole thing. Um, I don't think we said anything. No, we didn't, I don't think. (laughs) Which may be a first, I don't know. But um, it's, yeah, just the aesthetic, you don't see it all the time. It looks unique. It's funny. It's fast. Yeah, I mean, of course there's not a deep plot. It's called Manborg, you know? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just yeah. feel like they had a really clear sense of what they wanted to do with it, and they did it. Yeah. And so I, it seems like they achieved what they set out to do beautifully. And again, yes, with Biocop at the end, I was laughing out loud <laughs> through that. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, there, I can't think of a reason why, if you like B-movies, you would not like this movie. And again, I just want to point out, for anybody listening, that the Baron is awesome <laughs> in my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, he's so great. Um, I, th- I wish there was a Funko figure of the Baron, and I would buy it. <laughs> oh my god. So, oh my god. Yeah. So, I, um, I'm going to echo Chris's score, and I'm going to say 95. Nice. Wow. Nice. Mike, guys, I, Jay, to echo your saying, Jay, if you like B movies, there's no reason you wouldn't like this movie. It obviously has some chung and cheek stuff to it, but it's done in in the perfect way. Mm-hmm. It's not over the mm-hmm. top, and I I I think every gag lands. Yeah. Like I don't know, there wasn't a single gag that I was I groaned. It was all like, Haha, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's 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 so well done and. Uh, you're right. They achieved what they wanted to. I'm I, like, man, if they didn't achieve what they wanted to, I would love to see that fucking cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if, if, if they <sighs> fuck, man, I love Manborg. I don't see why anyone wouldn't like Manborg 100 shenanigans. Whoa. Whoa. Cue Ooh, the mariachi man. music. <laughs> <laughs> I bet like. There's no way. It, you, you should see it. If you oh. like this kind of shit, fucking do it. Oh, yeah. Man. It's perfect. Yeah. Which also it's makes great. this, makes Manborg the highest rated movie we've yeah. ever done on this show. I think so, yeah. Easily. Yeah. Whatever that turns out to be. <laughs> I mean, it is. I can tell well, you. It, yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah. Congratulations, well, Manborg. You've got the... 
the incredibly high honor of being the highest rated movie on our unknown podcast. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I I'm, I'm happy that you both really liked this because I f- still feel really bad about Bikini Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, uh, this more than makes up for it. Oh, more yeah. More than makes so, up for Bikini Hotel. So I, I, that's what I wanted to do. I knew I needed to pick a home run, and I, I, I felt this was going to be it. Yeah. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed it as much as I, or almost as much as I did. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Number one. Pretty close. Pretty close. Um, well, it, it, and in that case, I guess, speaking of, I, I guess there's just one last thing to announce for season three. Oh, are we here already? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, oh. there's one more movie for season three. I yeah. don't want it to end. Well, well me either, but I, I mean, am excited I about I the off season. Yeah, well, I don't want to edit anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't blame you. There's that. <laughs> but uh, Jay, why don't you tell us how we're going to close out season three? On the next episode of B Movie Mania. I put a lot of thought into this, and I think this is another one that we will all enjoy quite a bit. Um, It's a movie by a group of guys that I feel is, I don't know, I feel some camaraderie with. Um, It's a a low-budget vampire movie. But I say low-budget, but I don't think you'd be able to tell just from watching it. It's produced Mm. very well. And I feel like the cast is good, and the, I feel like it's funny, and I think you guys are really going to like it. It's very, very sort of um, Shaun of the Dead-ish, I think is okay, the right. closest thing I can compare it to. It is called, I Had a Bloody Good Time at House Harker. Hmm. I'll say that again. Okay. It is called, I Had a Bloody Good Time at House Harker. And I, I like a good long title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it is on Amazon Prime. Oh, you know what? I think I've heard. I think I. I think I've seen the trailer for this. You probably. If it's what I yeah. mean. It's it looks it's pretty, good. pretty popular on Amazon. Yeah. I think. I mean, it's got a lot of reviews, and it seems to be doing pretty good. Yeah. Um, yeah. just briefly, um, the sort of uh, quick dis- description of it is: um, it's been generations since the Harker's great great grandfather killed Count Dracula. So we're going from Dracula on to Dracula. Um, (laughs) Now, the Harker brothers and their best friend Ned are a town joke until a real vampire shows up. So it's kind of about them being kind of a laughing stock and everybody thinks vampires are fake and they they try to pull some shenanigans and then a real vampire (laughs) shows up and they have to deal with it. It's it's, okay. It's pretty fun. Nice. All right. Awesome. I'm excited to to watch this. Yeah. Yeah. Season finale, yeah. season three. Oh, well, uh, th- thank you everyone for listening. Uh, we're going to get the fuck out of here. If you want to, you know, if you're not subscribed, if you're listening on the website, you should get on your phone and subscribe through a podcast here or get on iTunes and subscribe to the podcast because then you get the stuff delivered to you when it comes out and you don't have to click on a fucking link. <laughs> right. And then you could also um, rate us through that service and yeah. help us out. You know, we like ratings and, and it uh, helps us get discovered and it makes us feel all warm and fuzzy. Yeah. We've been getting ratings lately and it, it's like, th- thank you so much. They've been such sweet reviews and you don't have to type a review. Just if you just want to click a star rating, you can just do that. That's too. fine. But thank you so much for everyone who, who's done that. It's, it's really appreciated. And it's so warm and fuzzy and nice. Everyone's so sweet. Also, once you're done with that review, send us some cash. Because, hey, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Give us your money. <laughs> yeah, we got we have a store, store.bmoviemania.com. We've got shirts up there. We've got sweaters up there. Uh, and, well, you know. Well, if you want to give them something in return, I just want some cash. Oh. Well, okay, if you want that, Chris's address is... <laughs> <laughs> So you can do that, too. <laughs> but anyway, we'll uh, see you next week for uh, a nice little teaser for whatever the fuck this Harker thing is. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. 
You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! There, there's no heaven? <laughs> Australian accent, mate. Oh, I'll put that little guy. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <man. laughs>